On today's episode, we react to that Eagles-Vikings fantasy bonanza, break down the rest of the matchups, and a face-off punishment that you are not going to want to miss. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Subscribe right now. Leave us some comments and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Friday, September 15th. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? I'm Andy Holloway. Excited to be with you. Friday episode of the show. Matchups to talk about. Reaction to last night's game. NFL news. Wheel of shame returns today. <laughs> Why are you so happy, Andy? I don't know. I just feel light. Well, like I'm happy. I, for I don't you. have any uh, I'm, care in the world. I am happy for you. I know what a struggle last season was. <laughs> yeah, as it just kept grinding on you. Yeah, piled up and piled up. Yeah. So maybe I can, uh, maybe I can take that mantle this season. We can hope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm for Mike's it. all about that. Yes. Welcome in one and all. You can uh, find the community over at jointhefoot.com. We had a fun footcast episode yesterday. You get a bonus episode every week over there. Bonus. Uh, later today, the Injury Blitz podcast from uh, jointhefoot.com from Matthew Betts will uh, make a second appearance this year. Pretty important one, too. I mean, with all that, I mean, come on, man. We're one week Seriously. in. Seriously. Why is everybody getting so hurt? <laughs> yeah, just appeal to uh, football. Yeah. Come on, football. Yeah. And we have that giveaway we talked about yesterday. Signed CMC jersey. You can go win that. FootClanGiveaway.com. Head over there. It is Friday. Let's do this, and then we'll talk about the game. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday, we give away a little something-something to a member of the Foot Clan. A $100 gift card to FantasyChamps.com. This week's winner, Lucas. Jay Lucas, congratulations. Go buy yourself a ring. Now, do they have permission to purchase a ring or a trophy if they did not win? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can you your, can your champ will love it. <laughs> you you can get it for your champion of your league. You can get a perennial trophy for your league, you know what I mean? Like Can you get an eventual trophy for yourself? Absolutely. That if it's a perennial trophy, I yeah, guess maybe it is you an didn't eventual. maybe you didn't win it this year, but your name's going on that at the end but can of it season. say eventual champion on the trophies? Yeah, you pre-order the plaque. Mm, probable, really. like 2023 probable, probable champion. Yeah. That's like the 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 guy they, they the ta tattoo the tattoo, which is just what he at this point. Yeah, you could peel that little plaque off. <laughs> I think it's I think it's <laughs> far safer. That's that's a good point. All right, last night 34 28 Philadelphia with the uh, I don't know the biggest six point blowout of the year, I guess. Kirk Cousins, 31 for 44, 364 and four, no interceptions. Come on. Why are you going to do me like this, Kirk? <laughs> Guys, Foot Clan, if, you are, if you're new, welcome. Yeah. Uh, stay to the end of the show so you can see something absurd and ridiculous. Um, but if you haven't followed the last year and a half, maybe two oh, years. Oh, no, five maybe, years. Yes. You, Mike, the fantasy hitman right, has always been a, a supporter and a believer of Kirk Cousins. Like yeah. As long as he's been back to the Washington – uh, Redskins days, like way back then, he loved him. You have him on your dynasty roster. I've had him since the draft. You had and, him. You drafted him in league of record, and you have never <laughs> gotten whether to pitch him or start him right in no. your life. No, it is unbelievable. He, he, I mean, I can't Hundreds believe of you times. are. I can't believe you are alive with the amount of knife wounds Kirk Cousins has put right in the belly. Yeah, just whoop. There's another one. Yeah, if he's I mean, on prime time, Kirk Cousins against the Eagles. Isn't that yes. a start? The situation, the Mike. Process. I I I am comf comfortable in the process saying there's no way I I could have played him because my other option is Joe Burrow. I'm going to play Joe sure. Burrow, but 
like in league of record. I dropped Kirk Cousins to pick up Jared Goff. I talked about it on the show. Uh oh. And of course, what does that mean for Goff? Three hundred sixty-four and four for Kirk Cousins. What a monster game! Two of those touchdowns went to T.J. Hawkinson, who had a huge week. Yeah, Jordan Addison back. was invisible, and then whoop, very visible. Seventy-two yards. Put him on the field. Sixty-two man. yard touchdown, and then KJ Osborne with a touchdown as well. Honestly, Jordan Jordan Addison had uh, I th I thought he had several rookie mistakes, which uh, I I thought he stopped running on a route down was, the sideline. Yeah, yeah. That, that you know it, he's not in sync yet. He <laughs> this is exciting. This is a player who week one was great, week two was great, and he's not on the field yet as a full time player, and he's making mistakes. He's only going to get better. There was only one player on the Minnesota Vikings last <laughs> night that wasn't a good start Yeah, because uh, Jefferson went 11 for 159 had the fumble where he was reaching for the end zone Alexander Madison woof eight for 28 he did have three receptions on six targets yes which, but they were garbage yeah, yeah two, of, two of them were uncatchable passes so uh here we are two weeks in Madison I believe is 19 for 61 on the season the concern uh, grows. They don't have viable options behind him. Only nine carries for this team. The offensive line is bad. They don't. It's not like there's a someone waiting in the wings. Although I just I just saw in our league of record, somebody went out and signed Kareem Hunt today in anticipation. I think interesting of Minnesota kicking the tires around Kareem Hunt. It hasn't been a good start for Alexander Madison. What are your thoughts on moving forward? I had, I. Had, Put out there, I would love to cash in on him after the week one touchdown ahead of the Eagles matchup because I thought you could attach him to somebody else and get rid of him. Sure. Yeah. So we, we knew, we talked about it during the matchup. Like this is going to be a, this will be very tough for, for Alexander Madison. This, the, his running style versus what the Eagles do really, really well. I mean, you can go back week one. Ramondre, Ramondre Stevenson. Is Ramondre Stevenson a bad running back? No. no. But he was 12 for 25 on the ground against the Philadelphia Eagles. Like It is very tough to run on them. The, the, the NFL gods have not been kind to the Minnesota Vikings off, uh, offensive line and Alexander Madison. But Madison is not helping the situation either with – I mean, the, the fumbles yesterday were – so, so bad. The second one didn't count. It got called back on a defensive holding, but he got pulled off of the field right after that. So that is something to pay attention to. He's not hes not an elite athlete. He, the argument for Madison has been he can catch the ball and he will be reliable. Like Volume. Volume is going to be there, which the snaps and everything were there. There wasn't a ton of carries on the ground, but there were a lot of – like there were a lot of good carries for no, not sorry not a lot there were some good carries for Madison out of the few that he had where I mean he's he's getting hit right at the line of scrimmage and having to fight his way just for a couple of yards and for the yards per carry like it counts when Carter gets just just saunters by the backup center mm -hmm. <laughs> like right into the I mean they're right this way Mr. Carter like to the backfield and Alexander Madison's there just to get blown up, that counts against the yards per carry. Again, I, and it counts. Is, it counts against the future yards per yes. carry if their offensive line can't get fixed. I, we've been bashing the volume laden uh, twenty-two opportunity Rashad White. How do you view Rashad White, Jason, in the context? Now he has Sean Tucker behind him, mm -hmm. whereas Madison Ty Chandler is not. I think he's a jag as well. So they don't have somebody to step up. Yeah, I I, I think Alexander Madison's going to be fine. He's going to be a volume play. He, you know, he is not what I, – I don't think he is what um, some people hoped he where has, he was going to become two just games, a, this is not what a, I hoped a star. For. But I also think he is going to be a, a reliable fantasy asset that is an RB2 or a flex option on a weekly basis. And and Mike's right. The, the Eagles' run defense is very difficult, especially with the offensive line injuries. The next month? The next month is is great. You get the Chargers, the Panthers, the Chiefs, and the Bears. Is that by low great? Uh, I, I don't think it's by low great. I think it's hold on great. He is my Zach Moss. I, you know, I the, the name Zach <laughs> Moss was rolling around in my mind because it's not too dissimilar. The opportunity for Zach Moss will be there. There's nobody behind him. He's going to get the carries. He's going to get the 
uh, receptions. The only the only huge difference is if Jonathan Taylor comes back and plays for the Colts, sure. the, then Zach Moss is poof. nine carries for Minnesota, forty eight carries yeah. for Philadelphia. Just the the last point for Madison because the argument was or part of the argument was the Vikings offense they're going to score a bunch of points. They had four touchdowns yesterday. They just were all passing touchdowns yesterday. DeAndre Swift. Oh, oh, oh. mercy. Oh, come on. I, I've never seen more consistent. <laughs> Where was this last year? Offensive. Well, he wasn't running behind this line. I'll tell you that. Kenny Gainwell didn't play. Boston Scott. Freaking Boston Swift. Scott was five for 40 on the ground. Yeah. Knocked out with a concussion. Rashad Penny. We'll be out of Walmart next week. Mm -hmm. DeAndre yeah. Swift had 28 carries for 175 yards and a touchdown. Had a 43-yard run. Looked uh, looked exceptional. The line was opening up like he was he was getting ahead of steam, which seemed to be yes. a huge advantage to him because he's fast. Like he got to the hole quickly, and then he did a lot with it. And you know he's faster than Kenny Gainwell. What is the what is the recipe moving forward? Because forty eight rushing attempts, Jason. We were talking about the offense in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Your reaction to their offense so far through two games? Yeah, I, I think their offenses look terrible, like putrid. The the week one against the uh, the the, the, the Patriots, they scored one offensive touchdown the whole game. Week two against not a great Vikings offense, they looked really bad. They did until they went. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Check this out. They can't stop the run. And so then, I mean, the, the passing game just did not look great. And then they figured, More than double the rush attempts than pass attempts. They figured out that if we just hand the ball off every single play, their defensive line cannot handle our offensive line. It worked every single DeAndre Swift time mm -hmm. uh, that they that they did it. And then that opened up the passing game. Then, then you had some success in the passing game. So um, The passing I'm, game was really too... Big plays. Yeah, it was two big plays, both to uh, Devontae Smith. Um, one touchdown, one just big deep pass. And then running the ball. When, now, going forward, I don't know that you're going to be able to, you know, next week is the Buccaneers. They have a much better run defense, I think, than the Vikings. The week after that is the Commanders, same. So, I don't think you're going to be able to say – that they're going to run the ball to this degree going forward. I think this was a Minnesota Vikings special. But what DeAndre Swift did was establish himself as an important part of this offense. I think when Gainwell is back, it will be solidified a little bit more to a two-man rotation. And Rashad I, Penny is just – just drop him. Yeah. Just get – Rashad Penny could not get in this game. You had Kenny Gainwell gone. Then you had Boston Scott concussed. And they still just kept going to DeAndre Swift over and over and over and over and over, no matter how tired he was, until DeAndre Swift called himself out of the game. He's like, oh, I need a break. He calls himself out. They bring Penny in. Penny was <laughs> and Penny And yeah. Penny ruined an A.J. Brown touchdown. He did yes. ruin an A.J. Brown touchdown with an offensive hold, which would have made me quite a bit of money. <laughs> Jerk. Uh, but, so, yeah, so he's, he's just dead on that roster. It, it's hard as someone who has Kenny Gainwell not to see this night and say if he had been able to play oh, yeah. how great it would have been behind this old line with that defense. But DeAndre Swift, you can't erase what he did. I mean, there's a chance he leads the, the timeshare just on this performance. I, I'm not it's, sure that will happen. I think it's about 50-50. It's almost worst-case scenario for next week. Should If Gainwell is active. I mean, who are you going to have? I think the you probably play, play Swift. That, but that's what you're like. Oh, I probably right, do right. this, but there's no like. I have real confidence that I know that I can predict or project that this is what the team is going to do. Uh, it probably is Swift, but it could go right back to Kenny Gainwell. And I can't. And it's it's a mess now. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, I'm just going to throw this out there because um, it, it, it there's there's a a very small situation where. I think I would be at least willing to look at kicking the tires on trading Jalen Hurts high here. Um, oh, interesting. If if Josh Allen comes out, has a really bad week or something, and another great quarterback okay. looks okay. bad, and you can parlay this great fantasy performance. Fantasy. Fantasy <laughs> performance. Yeah. I mean, he had two goal line opportunities where the, they just happened to get the ball at the one, and so you it's tush-push. It's going to work every time. That's not going to happen all the time. They, they just didn't look good as a passing offense, so – don't hear what I'm not saying. Jalen Hurts is great. He's going to be good for fantasy, but I don't think he's going to – like, I'm scared he's not going to be the what, – what you hope when you spin a second rounder. So if you could trade him for another great quarterback 
plus a running back or plus a wide receiver. I, I think I'm. I, I mean, a, I've got him on the league of record. I'm probably going to be looking at that. He is. The offense doesn't look the same without Shane Steichen so far. I'm concerned about Dallas Goddard's involvement in the offense in light of the fact that the offense is changing, the play caller has changed. Those are things to watch. And then A.J. Brown. Like, A.J. Brown, has, he was screaming on the sideline in the midst of a 27-7 to lead at the time, whatever the score was, because he wasn't getting enough. And, uh, yeah, the, the passing offense doesn't look comfortable. Jalen Hurts' rushing attempts, if you notice, there's been a lot of them for very little yards. Uh-huh. And they all seem like hesitant, last-minute decisions, not rhythm decisions. And, and he's not looking – he is not looking like he did last year where when he went on the run, he's looking to break a 20, 30, 40, 50, 80-yard run. Like, that's his goal. When he was running right now, he's looking to pick up a couple yards, get out of bounds. Like, that's that's kind of what it seems like so far. All right, let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, I must have, I must have dipped out early yesterday because I didn't see this news till just now. Really? No, I, I uh, didn't see it. Eckler not practicing again on Thursday, Jason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want Zach Moss? <laughs> I, I, I'll make you an offer. I could use him. Um, oh, uh, if you trade back for him, I would never. I would never. Yeah. I he, deserve. He already made his bed. I deserve. Oh, but to lose if I play Zach Moss, I'll give you Moss for Hertz. <laughs> so Eckler did not practice it's an early game on Sunday which complicates the matter if you didn't spend uh, or well, I guess it, it helps it, the yeah, matter it helps. Sorry. It helps. Uh, but if you didn't spend up on Josh Kelly and you need a pivot I mean like do you think Eckler's going to be out or is this just like he's the kind of player where he could not practice all week and they could still play him 100% I, it, as of right this second I think Eckler misses this game but I am waiting until the the game time decision is made because he is 100% in the lineup if he plays. He he has been really good. Despite him being a smaller back, he has played through all sorts of injuries and played well. There are just – there are some human beings who are just tougher. <laughs> they just are, you know, that they, they, they can play through You know stuff. the right doctors. <laughs> got the right saying, drugs. Like, he's going to be hurting, and he's going to be fine if he's out there. All right, we talked about that breakdown on yesterday's show as well. Christian Watson, Aaron Jones, both didn't practice on Thursday. Yoo-hoo. I would consider them both doubtful yep. to perform or to play, rather. Uh, Titans wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins didn't practice. This has been the Hopkins issue for three years. This is why the demand for Hopkins on the open market was minimal. He he came out. Did you see he came out and said there were like four teams he wanted to play for and they all said they didn't want him? Oh, mm. no. Mm-mm. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, that feels bad. Lions didn't want him. He wanted to go to Detroit. What? So wow. You know, there's something uh, on well, film. Mon- money too. Yeah, money and and but the money should be there for a guy that you expect to deliver like Hopkins, and it wasn't. So he didn't practice. Honestly, it puts Traylon Burks into consideration. Very sneaky. One hundred percent. I think Traylon Burks is a good start this week if Hopkins is out. Devontae Adams returned to a full practice, so it was maintenance. Jacoby Myers is doubtful for week two. You know, you look at that, and you you would hope that. Josh Jacobs' targets would go up with mm-hmm. the lack of Jacoby Myers. Devontae Adams, certainly you'd expect those targets to go up. And then I don't know where else to look because Renfro is, has been so withdrawn from the offense. I mean, he's the one that jumps out as like, okay, he should he should take the Jacoby Myers role, but maybe he's just not that good anymore. Uh, it's it's possible. I do think that he has a good game, though. The, would you play Burks his- or Renfro? Uh, if Hopkins is if out, Hopkins I would play and, Traylon and Burks. And Jacoby Myers is out. Yeah, Tr- Traylon Burks, I think, is a is a really good play this week if if Hopkins is out. Renfro, to me, is someone that matches what Jimmy Garoppolo and his style is going to do. That you know, and he, he'll fill in for that Jacoby Myers role. Travis Kelsey limited on Thursday. I think there's a lot of optimism he'll be out there. What time is that game, Kyle? Do you know which? What the is it? The early game. The well, Chiefs game? Yeah, Chiefs it game. It is, yeah. It's, it's early. Yeah, all right. That's it's good. morning. Uh, Mark Andrews was also limited yeah. as well. Uh, here are some matchups oh, we'll talk one. about today. I, I I just wrote in our Slack channel, we need the oh, come on soundbite from yeah. Jim Carrey because, guys. Come on, man. I got this in the car driving home yesterday, and I was like, of course, <laughs> fantasy football. Puka Nakua was added to the Thursday injury report with an oblique inju- injury injury. He did not practice Dude. on Thursday. Oh, man. I mean, 
the, the darling of the fab. We had no idea about this injury. Nobody did. Assuming it happened late well, in the game. Well, but it was added Thursday. I know. So maybe it happened yeah. Wednesday. It is it is possible, but this is this is really disappointing. It's so disappointing. He's the bell of the ball. And I want to see him play against the Niners. Like I the world deserves to see is Puka that guy? Do you care? We'll talk about it in the matchup. But do you care about Ben Jefferson and Tutu? No, if, if these guys Tutu are... maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to ask Van Jefferson. Oh, but, it feels like such no. a trap because I want to go back to Higby again. But we'll talk about it. Jerry Judy upgraded to full practice. Yep. He will probably be on a snap count according to Benjamin Albright, very trusted source out there in Denver. James Conner limited on Thursday. No, no expectation. The limited be out. every day. Kendra Miller returned to a limited practice. Oh, the recovery. Maybe it's we'll on. see a limited game at some point. Uh, Greg Zerline, groin injury. Yeah. Just uh, some kicker news for you, Jason. Thank you. That was today's news and notes presented oh, by. <laughs> oh, did we got that? We got okay, the. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold Puka, on. P Puka missed practice on Thursday. Oh, come on! I think, we, I think we can upgrade the audio quality, but that's good for mid show. It's the best I could do on that's short good for notice. mid show. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I mean that that gif is great. I say, oh, come on to that. Sound drop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is it for news and notes. Brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break. Back with the forecast. All right. Let's go ahead and dive back into some very important matchup decisions. Week two. Those of you that fell in week one, this is redemption time. We got to get you back on track. Let's do it. Fantasy forecast. What is going on here? Explain. First matchup. Okay, the Colts, 0-1, taking on the 0-1 Houston Texans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Houston minus one and a half. Mm. Saying it's it, moved. it was Indy minus one yesterday. So the money has jumped over to the Houston side. The over under is just 39 and a half in this Blarf. game. Blarf. Blarf is, is it Blarf. Blarf. That's good. I and it was like a rolling Blarf. I've never wanted a shirt printed so fast. Blarf is the perfect fantasy football word. But uh, yeah, any game, that's official. Any game under 40. Blarf. That's a Blarf game. The line was Indy minus one yesterday. I know why this changed. Zach Moss is going to be active. Oh. <laughs> a running back uh, does not change the no, line. No, you know I'm joking. Well, are there any fears? You understood. That yes, I get that. Moved it the wrong direction, right? Are they? Oh. That's the joke. Yeah. It moved it. It made Indianapolis worse. Smart betters. Very sharp. Uh, two rookie quarterbacks is why this line is where it's at. Anthony Richardson last week. Uh, he was the quarterback four. C.J. Stroud, there were some pains. Five sacks, ten hits. It was Baltimore. I saw some good stuff from Stroud last As week. As did I. I. I didn't think the game was was garbage. Like I, There were plays where I said, okay, that was a, that was a good throw, good read, um, tight window. Nico Collins, the targets. Robert Woods, the targets. Uh, Nico Collins this week, I think, is an interesting flex play. I, I, I would probably play Nico Collins... I'd play him over Hunter Renfro in that previous discussion. Sure. And I'd probably play him over Traylon Burks with how bad stinking Tannehill, Tannehill yeah. looked. I that one's tougher, but Nico had a twenty six percent target share, which was eleven targets, six for eighty. And he's Nico Collins, since he has been in the league, has has always been that uh like alluring player of like Totally. I, you know, like, man, I can see it. I can see that there is a good wide receiver there. But he could never manage to stay healthy. 14 games as a rookie, 10 last year. So maybe this is the time for Nico Collins. And, but there The are, competition there are, is not stiff. Robert Woods well, is old. It's it's not stiff, but it's going to change. Uh, you have John Mechie did not play in week one. Noah Brown's on IR now. Noah Brown has gone to, to IR. So Tank Dell, who is another one of these quick twitch, just shifty little fellas. Little Zay Flowers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That type of a player. So it's... It's not. Uh, it's not a home run. Jason's that it'll making be, a. You yeah, sure about that face? Yeah, the same fly. The same fly. No, no, I'm two, saying, it's a two-two Atwell comp. 
Okay, fine. I'm just, we're just talking about the archetype of a player, not the not the quality. He's not. He wasn't a first round pick, but the fact that if those two guys are in there, it could end up taking away. But as of right now, Nico and Robert Woods are the offense. Jason has Damian Pierce as his start of the week. Last week uh, wasn't great. It was Baltimore. This week, brighter days. The Colts defense gave up 24 fantasy points to the running back position uh, in week one. Near the bottom. And Dalton you, Schultz led all tight ends and routes run in week one. Yeah, who cares? And he ended up with four total yards. It is not good. No. Nope. Um, yeah, with Damian Pierce, you just expect this game to not get out of hand in either direction, that both teams will be in it so the running backs can stay involved, which is why on the other side of the field, Mike has uh, Zach Moss disgustingly as a start of the week. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Hit that button. Anthony Richardson, this is the question that I have. I feel like I've been tempted by the Houston name, and we've we've done this for a year and a half now. When you see a team play Houston, they beat Houston. And when you see a team play Houston, they score a bunch of points. Mm -hmm. But the stats bear out that Houston doesn't produce points for the opposing quarterback. Mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson, they covered the spread. He had seven points. This goes back to last year. Trevor Lawrence, you remember that game? Oh, Trevor Lawrence will get it yep. done. No, he didn't. He scored four fantasy points, destroyed the Texans. So, I mean, just they, they shellacked him. Uh, Trevor Lawrence played fantastic. For fantasy, it was a bust of a game. When you see, like I have a decision to make with Tua Tungavailoa going up against New England in New England primetime or Anthony Richardson against what seems like a Patsy matchup. I'm going to play Tua. I think that's I've made the right the, I've made that decision. Okay. It's formal now. It's done. I'm excited to see what Richardson can do. Yeah, what I'm looking for is you had 37 attempts for Anthony Richardson, his first game and ever. And he was accurate. Uh, yeah. He, he was in the 60s. 65% of his passes. It was, a, it was a good passing game for Richardson, but they were also in a very negative game script. Like the, the Jags got out to a really hot start on offense. It, it looked – I mean, from the first half, it looked like Trevor Lawrence was about to have just – an explosivo game where he's like the quarterback one, but the the Colts found themselves over the second half of the game and kind of slowed them down, but more than more than the first half. But the point is, I don't expect Anthony Richardson throwing the ball thirty seven times in no. this matchup. That being said, if he has the big one on the ground because he had the most design runs of any quarterback right. last week, it's coming. Like without question, yeah. he's going to have a Justin Fields day with a 71-yard touchdown run or something to that extent. And uh, I do want that on my yeah, fantasy I, roster. I, I certainly don't view Anthony Richardson as someone you need to bench just because of what has happened with Houston. Shane Steichen, you know, we, we see his absence uh, for, for the Philadelphia Eagles, but so far in one week we, we saw his presence here for the Colts, and I think he's going to do great things with Anthony Richardson. So you can start him. I, I wouldn't start him over Tua. But I, I think Anthony Richardson easily could, you know, be designed up a scheme run that makes his entire fantasy day good. You can put Michael Pittman back in your lineup again this week. Zach Moss, Mike mentioned it, and then we move on. I am keeping my eye on Josh Downs. I sure. I uh, anytime you'll need both. He's hard to find. Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, you don't say that about Zay Flowers. <laughs> no, um, I don't. Because he's I've, also hard to find. I've got my takes. <laughs> oh yeah, you, you take are lock. take lock with with Josh Downs. Uh, but you admitted it last week. Like he was on the field a lot. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> Seven targets. Yeah. yeah, I think he's kind of hiding right now from fantasy players because the performance. He's hiding from the defense. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. I think he's worth a cursory pickup uh, ahead of a potential breakout. He is. We know Michael Pittman can disappear. So yes, Josh that, Downs might have a week. And Josh Downs was referred to by Reggie Wayne as the best wide receiver in the draft. Jason, he, he, is this the so, team you can't handle? I mean, if Josh Downs is the wide receiver <laughs> and then Josh, Zach Moss is the running back. Yeah, uh, I am far more open to Josh Downs actually being a good player. I, I don't. I did not believe that Josh Downs would ever amount to anything for fantasy football for his entire career before you know he was ever on the field. Um, but I see the talent, and uh, part of that was a, a weight, a size issue for him, and so a draft third, ends up as a third rounder, right? Um, you know, he wasn't the the fact that he was a third rounder in his size historically, it just doesn't work out for fantasy. I still don't believe it will. But after week one, the fact that he played his way into the starting role right off the McKenzie bat, McKenzie had targets, one snap, I think. Yeah, and and he's 
he looked good. So I'm open to Josh Downs being a very good player. I think he is someone that needs to be on your radar, and you should be picking him up in deeper leagues for sure. All right, San Francisco at 1-0, and take on the 1-0. and Super impressive first week, Los Angeles Rams. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, well, DraftKings didn't find it all that impressive because San Francisco, 7.5-point road favorites in this one. Yikes. The over-under is 44.5. I think a lot of that has to do with the history, right? Kyle Shanahan, I mean, and the and the players on the rosters, but, like, Shanahan's had McVay's number. Yes, eight, he has. Eight and three against Los Angeles historically. Matthew Stafford was arguably the most impressive first week passer. 24 for 38, 334. Uh, he didn't have the touchdowns, but just in terms of, you know, PFF quarterback rating. He looked great. Uh, he was behind Tua. Brock Purdy looked great as well. I mean, he's been a machine in this offense. You know, you don't have a lot of start questions with San Francisco. You're mm. playing all of the players. McCaffrey, Debo, Ayuk, Kittle, play them. Yep. On the other side, we just found out Puka Nakua missed practice. We were disappointed in Van Jefferson. Tutu Outwell seems like Tutu outlier. And then Tyler Higby was a disappointment. So he are can, you he can do that. Are you going to play any of the pass catchers before we talk about the runners? Man, I don't think so. Um, I, I'm not even confident if Puka plays that I want to play him. If he is dealing with an injury against the San Francisco 49ers, if he's out, I don't feel like I want to really go in on, on Tutu at Well, I mean, the one player that I would consider is Tyler Higby, who very much disappointed week one. But if they don't have Puka, they got to throw the ball to somewhere. But at the same time, it's still the Niners defense. I, I'm, I'm not excited about any of the pass catchers there. And... I'm less excited about the running backs than I am the pass catchers because the 49ers run defense is great. And now we know that like I liked Cam Akers before the season. And the reason I liked him was because the, the end run of last year, he was 70 plus percent of all opportunities for running backs of snaps. He's the dude. And it looked like there was a depth chart that said he's going to be the dude. Well, that's not the case. Kyron Williams is he could be the starter. I don't know if he's the starter or the backup week two will probably illustrate that for sure. But what we do know for sure is that it's two-headed. Whoever the starter is, is not just a workhorse. They're not getting 70-plus percent of snaps and 70-plus percent of uh, the rushing attack. Now, 70-plus percent of routes, that seems to be Kyron's. Cam yes, was, that, yes. Cam Akers was not running routes, so I lean Kyron over Cam. He was Cam. walking them. Yes, I, I lean Kyron over Cam. But if, if this is split – against the San Francisco 49ers run defense. I'm O-U-T. I'm looking elsewhere. Yeah, I'm playing Zach Moss over Kyron. I'll tell you that. This week, it's it's uh, much better for Zach Moss. They did come out. At, at, the team didn't, but the Indianapolis Star came out and said he will function as unquestioned lead back in that offense. All right, the Giants, 0-1, taking on the 0-1 Cardinals. Cardinals, an impressive loss in week one. Giants, a depressing loss in week one. DraftKings Sportsbook line has the Giants as four-point road favorites. The over-under is just above the Blarf level. It's 40. Well, here we go. This is a game that I don't – I'm not sure I want to – It's not putting that fire in your belly? It's going on one of the outside <laughs> TVs, Mike. We need to make sure this one's not near the middle. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I expect the Giants to fix some of their issues. Part of that is a trust in Brian Dable – Part of that is a distrust of the Cardinals uh, kind of, you know, they caused turnovers three on the road against Washington. That really helped them stay in the game, but their offense is not capable. I saw some numbers that were interesting uh, highlighting how the Cardinals pressure rate was actually not really significant. They just, when they got through, they were, they were getting a, a quarterback. Five sacks, was it? Yeah. I mean, like the, the on the stat sheet, it looks great, and so you can't take that away from them. But it's a that's a that that feels more like that's on the quarterback making uh, bad decisions, not taking the read that that is there, trying to force something. And oh. I mean, it was it's Sam Howell's what his second start. I mean, mm -hmm. so those things it, you had to Sam Howell. If 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 it were anyone other than the, than the Arizona Cardinals defense, you know, if if against Sam Howell in that opening matchup, you would have been excited to target that defense much like you like well I'm going to pick up the Colts this week and play them against CJ Stroud or whoever's 
against the Carolina Panthers. I'm going to keep playing them until that quarterback shows me that they're good. So it's not surprising to me that Sam Howell took that many sacks. James Conner, Hollywood Brown, where are you with those guys right now? Connor is a he's a volume based running back too. He he has talent, but he's still it's just you're playing him because he's going to get all the work. I think he's a little bit more of a flex option. I do worry a little bit about this calf injury. Wednesday practice being missed, I expect that to be the entire season for James Connor. Thursday practice being missed with a calf injury. We, it, we actually just had a quote. It just came out. Oh, let Did me you hear see it. this. Jonathan, no, I Jonathan seen Ganner it. said running back James Connor dealing with the calf injury is doing good. Okay. Superman does good. Superman, thank it you. Might not change your opinion. <laughs> no, it, that it, was it from Jan that was from Gannon. I, I certainly think you could start him because he is uh like Mike said, he's a volume play, but I see him more as like a flex option, an R B three than an R B two. Um and also I want to highlight what a great matchup this is across the field for Saquon. Saquon Barkley should have a complete monster get right game. Uh the the Cardinals gave up the you know, the most fantasy points to running backs. Um and you look at Saquon's splits, Saquon uh, in wins was 17.5 fantasy points last year versus losses 13.5. Home road, on the road, he was 19.2 fantasy points per game versus 13 at home. This is a road victory for the uh, Giants, so he, sh he should eat here. What about Hollywood? <sighs> Hollywood no, had no, five you. targets, but it didn't look good. Michael Wilson ran more routes than Hollywood. I'm, I'm not playing a single Cardinals. Zach Ertz had the most targets. Pass catcher, including yes, Zach Ertz. he did. Daniel Jones, startable in this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saquon Barkley, and, yep. And yeah. what about this this and laundry wall. list of running back names? Shepard and, and Slayton receivers. and Hodgins, or sorry, wideouts, and Campbell and Hyatt and Waller. No, no need. No, no need. need. Just just hold off until one of them actually separates, but it should also be a get-right game for the Wallerists. The New York Jets travel to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Both teams want to know the DraftKings Sportsbook line. Dallas minus oh, no. nine and a half. The over-under is 38 and a half. That gives the Jets 14 points. Before the Rodgers injury, this game line was minus three for Dallas. Now it's almost a 10-point line. And this just comes down to the fundamental reality that no one can conceive, even the most imaginative minds, those that have written the greatest fantasy novels in history, None of them have been able to conceive how Zach Wilson will score on the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. They have not been able to construct a storyline that says he will get from point A to point B short of the defense steals the ball from Dallas and gives them a 15-yard field. Yeah, I mean, if, that's if possible. He, if he dumps off to Brees Hall for a 99-yard <laughs> touchdown reception, um, that could happen. News came out this morning from Robert Sala that Brees Hall will continue to be on a pitch count. So that's worth noting. This is not a good matchup for Brees Hall. No. I, I'm not saying bench him. No. I think if you saw what happened last week, you're going to take your chances on a big play. But there is the chance that this game ends up being a disappointment for Brees Hall managers. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 you don't look at the Dallas Cowboys and think, man, what a great opportunity to score a bunch of points. The Cowboys' uh, defense has been great. Last year was very good. Um, you can run on them a bit, and I do think that the Jets' identity now shifts to being – Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook and running the ball as much as possible. So I'm fine starting either one of those guys as an RB2, um, not expecting big things. Uh, and, and, you know, this is going to be a defensive game. I mean, you have two great defenses here. Yeah, it's a 38 and a half point over under. Both, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, both of these <laughs> fantasy defenses should be played as well. Don't be afraid of Dallas's offense, you know, when no. looking at playing the Jets defense. The Jets defense is, I mean, they just, they just, you know, shut down the Buffalo Bills, who are a great offense. And if there's someone turning the ball over at the same pace as Josh Allen, it's Dak Prescott. Yeah, my concern is just you're going to get the uh, the defense on the Jets shouldn't have given up the points, but then they had the short field. Mm -hmm. That's my concern. But Dalvin Cook or Brees Hall, who would you pick? Brees. I'm going Brees. I want the ex explosivo. Yeah. Garrett Wilson is a what this week? A wide receiver three-ish. Three-ish. Yeah. So that that would be some tough start-sit decisions. Brooksy, why don't you look up some of the most popular Garrett Wilson-based start-sit decisions on the site? How about uh, Garrett Wilson or Zay Flowers? <laughs> I, I was just looking at that. when you asked. I said look them up. I did not say bring them up on the yeah, air. Yeah, we don't want to answer them. Those are far them. too difficult. I would 
I'm going to play Garrett Wilson. I'm going to play Flowers. All right, Jason, split the tie. I will play Flowers. I think against Dallas, the you're I I don't I don't <laughs> want I don't want Garrett Wilson. Blarf. Yeah, I mean it's it's it stinks, but I think Garrett Wilson has a DJ Moore or Garrett Wilson. I'll go DJ Moore. I'll take my start of the week in DJ Moore. Okay. Brandon Cooks is a game time decision. He, he should probably be a bench decision yes. right now for you. Yeah. And keep just keep your eyes on Jake Ferguson. Absolutely. Don't I wouldn't play him. No. But I I'd, I'd look at him. Yeah, yeah, just see what he looks like. See what he looks Try like. Try to commit it to memory. Mike Evans or Garrett Wilson? Mike Evans. Mike Evans. Yeah, I agree. Washington Commanders. Oh, boy, here we go. This show <laughs> might be the longest one ever. <laughs> the Commanders are 1-0. and The Broncos are 0-1. The game's in Denver. That's a, a, that's a key point here. The DraftKings Sportsbook line. <laughs> a lot of blarfing going on. Denver minus 3.5. The over-under is 39. <laughs> it's because – and look, all these numbers, by the way, I mean, the matchups certainly dictated, but the unders – destroyed like last Vegas last week last yeah. week if you went if you were a sports book type of person and you just took individual unders on every game you did very well here's what i want to start the conversation with <laughs> ron rivera decided to come out and uh share that he was going to buck conventional wisdom he will try to avoid <laughs> altitude sickness by slipping into denver just before the game for science. He has decided that there is some study out there that tells you elevation doesn't affect you for 24 hours. Tell that to the bag of chips <laughs> you drive up the mountain. Okay? <laughs> Tell that. I mean, I I, I go I, up to a mile high here in Arizona mm -hmm. very often. The first 24 hours is without question the worst. <laughs> you get out of your, I don't, you I mean, out I, of your car, you walk, and you're like, oh my God, yeah, I can't the breathe. air is very thin. <laughs> and then after, guess what? After 24 hours, I am acclimated. I think he read it wrong. I think he got this report and actually just completely missed a negative in there and was like, ah, I've got the key. I think you want it, to come a little early. It, com <laughs> it confuses me as to whether the commanders are going to get boat raced. Uh -huh. it, well, uh, to be fair, uh, that quote was actually from 2021 yeah. for a previous time that they went up there. So they've already experienced this. They went up there. Uh, snuck in, uh, you know, followed the science, scored ten points in that game total, uh, then got and and got uh, beat. So I think do it again. <laughs> why, why not? I am I am not a scientist, but I have had the same experience as you guys of when <laughs> when I travel to a place that is a much higher altitude than where I live. Immediately, I am like, oh man, it's hard to breathe here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, here but we I, that's just my own personal experience. I don't think that this game, regardless of altitude acclimation, looks like a very fun one for fantasy players. No, uh, you want the Denver Broncos defense. That's the most fun thing. I mean, what what do you do with Jahan Dotson? He was targeted heavily. McLaurin's still dealing with the injury. I'm still willing to play. Are Dotson. both of those guys going into your lineup? McLaurin included. This yeah, was a, a Broncos defense that last year was very good against wide receivers. Uh, week one, they kind of they got dismantled by uh, was was it Mike Evans? Which Mike what Evans? was the the Broncos Raiders? Oh Raiders. yeah, yeah, uh, Mike Jacoby Evans Myers. played the Vikings. Yeah, but uh, you gave up thirty five fantasy points to the to the wide receiver position with Jacoby Myers and Ant Adams last week. Yeah, I'm, I'm still playing them. Would you, what about the the Manders guys or Garrett Wilson? I'm gonna pass this one on to Jason. Yeah, Jay, what do you think? <laughs> that's that's really really tough. I think because I'm not answering. I it. think because you are split with McLaurin and Dotson in the elevation on the road, I would go with Wilson. So that that shows kind of I'm I'm a little bit down on the Washington pass catchers. I'm really down on all the pass catchers in this game. Uh on the D, uh, on the Denver side of the ball, I mean if you're starting one it's clearly Cortland Sutton. He is the one. Uh, Jerry Judy, you know, is if he's active, he's going to be on a snap count, they say. Marvin Mims was not very involved. Now, that's a none of them for me then. Sure, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think in this game, I really want to start the Denver Broncos defense. I think you could probably start the commander's defense. In a, in a, a 30, commander's defense, absolutely. 39 point over under. This game has 15 to 16 written all over it. Yeah, if that. Yeah, with some turnovers. So, uh, Sunday night football, the Dolphins. At 1-0, take on the New England Patriots. 
This one looks a little bit brighter. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Miami minus three. The over-under is 46 and a half. You don't want to overemphasize what happened with Miami in week one. But the path is there for this to be the recipe weekly for Miami. They couldn't stop anybody on the Chargers side. Couldn't stop the run game. Joshua Kelly looked like an all-star. Mm -hmm. And yet their offense was cruising. And so the 46 and a half point over-under is encouraging. Mac Jones, what he did against the Eagles is encouraging. Uh, you know, you're going to have, uh, what, Teron Armstead is coming back? We'll see. Yeah, that, he, that should help the uh, protection for slice and dice to a tongue of Iloa. Sure. Taron Armstead. Yeah, yeah. Th this is one of those where I'm, I'm really curious <clears throat> on the rock and the hard place situation. You have a really explosive offense that we saw in week one with the Dolphins, a really – dominant defense that we saw in week one with the Patriots and and what's going to give in this. I worry a little bit about over-inflating the Dolphins' offense based on what we saw last year. Last year, we saw them go nuclear. Just nobody could stop them. Uh, you know, when they were scoring, uh, there, there was a three-week stretch where they scored 31, 35, 39 points, and then they follow that up, and this is with Tua. These are all Tua games. This is when he was starting completely with 15 points, 17 points, when, 17 points. When was the... The concussion uh, the, had happened already before the explosiveness. Yeah, but then there was other ones throughout. And then they're like, I don't remember all the I'm the looking at the game log it. right now. I mean, it, last year was hard to dissect, even in the way that Jason's breaking it down, because the concussion caused you to miss games. Well, but them saying there was but then that there one, was also like you know there the, was the mid game. Remember, there was the mid game one where everyone watching the game was saying, "Tua has a concussion. What are you doing?" And then he went back in the game, and it was he looked like a man who would like forgot how to play quarterback. So I, I don't, believe that was the Buffalo game. Was it, but I, I I don't remember all the details I, of when everything happened. You know, Houston, San Francisco, Chargers, Buffalo, Green Bay, me, very mediocre to end the season before the the other concussion. Took him off the field. But I'm going to stay in the flames with Tua because right. they were, you know, I know we try to give him two weeks for, for a chance to be on fire. He almost packed two weeks worth of points into week one. Right. So I'm going to give him the go. He's also 3-0 and in three starts against New England in his career. Uh, on the running back side, though, Mostert is the starter. Mm -hmm. Ahmed is seemingly the number two right now. Right. And then we had a quote this morning from Mike McDaniel saying, we'll see as to whether Devon A. Chain is going to be active. That's so, so weird. He does not currently have uh, an established role in this offense. That may come with time, but the problem is you will get Jeff Wilson back in four weeks, So presumably. So it, it's a mess. Uh, the only one I'd play is Mostert, and it's not an enthusiastic start for Raheem Mostert. Like, would you play Zach Moss with the plus matchup against Houston or Raheem Mostert? with the negative matchup against New England. I'd rather play Devon A-Chain if he's inactive than Zach Moss. How dare you? Um, Mike, I, I, maybe you'd be I, the one to speak would, to this. I would still really, though, I would I would go Mostert personally. I I would probably go Moss. The the starting running back, I, he got a touchdown last week. I mean, it's looking at the line for Raheem Mostert, it's 12 opportunities for a game when – in 73% of snaps, 12 opportunities, and they scored 36 points. What struck me the most in that game was the fact that they looked like a team that always wanted to pass the football. It, that's And that's what I was getting to. Of this is that Their identity is they're a passing team, which you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Like, of course, your identity is going to be focused on passing the ball. So Mostert will rely on big plays and – actually getting touchdowns but he had a he had a touchdown a rushing touchdown this past week but it, uh, that's why I kind of lean Moss of it wouldn't surprise me to see Zach Moss with 20 plus opportunities and some goal line uh, opportunities on top of that where most are he's just going to be in, in that 10 to 12 I, every week I'm I'm going to change my answer for the sake of the foot clan I, I think Zach Moss is the better play over okay. Mostert with this matchup Ramondre Stevenson was the RB 19 on 19 chances last week Zeke got 14 opportunities including seven targets. Yeah. So give me your, your kind of gut reaction to that the distribution of uh, labor, as you would say, in week one for the running back position for New England. Uh, you need Tums and Pepto-Bismol for the gut. Ramondre is still the the better player. He, d he will do more on the passing work. That's 
kind of Stevenson specialty, but it is going to be very, very frustrating. Of you'll uh, there's going to be many games this this year where Stevenson has the most work, and Zeke is going to end up with like the touchdown or two, and he'll outscore Stevenson. Ramondre Stevenson was on the field for seventy three percent of snaps. Right. I don't I don't care about Zeke at all. I'm not worried at all. He, he, Zeke's going to have carries just like Damian Harris did. Ramondre is a great play. You've got to keep firing him up. The wide receiver room for New England, uh, last week they were without Devontae Parker. Uh, you've got uh, the offseason uh, hopes of Tyquan Thornton were, were muffled when he went to IR. Hmm. Kendrick Bourne ended up being the yep. beneficiary because Juju, like Juju Smith-Schuster looked so uninvolved that like you had booty right, getting some work and, in that offense, and, and he looked better. Yeah, and we're not talking about like an anatomy part. We're talking no. about the player, booty. Kayshawn. Who – through the off season was this guy's probably not making the team. <laughs> so, oh no, no. In fact, he is starting for this team. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'll just say it and get out of the way. I'm not starting Ken Kendrick Bourne. I I don't I have the confidence. Mike is starting him. Yeah. Uh, Jason, are you willing? If N no, I don't. I don't think I want to start Kendrick Bourne. There's there's other players I uh, like a little bit better. I think uh, last week the fact do do we have an update on Devonte Parker's health right now? He's questionable. Last I heard. So I. I don't know if he's going to start this week. He's at practice this, this morning. He's hanging out. Not sure if it's limited or yeah, full like, or what. Is he eating chips or is he yeah, taking he's, reps? What's he's, what's he doing? If, if, he's if, there. That's if, all we know. <laughs> if Devontae good, Parker. That's some good reporting, whoever's putting that out. He's here. Maybe that just means he's practicing. Yeah, I mean, if, if Devontae Parker is active for the game, I'm certainly not going to start Kendrick Bourne just because, um, you know, I don't, I don't think the opportunity would be there for him. I'm willing to throw him in if Devontae Parker's inactive. Hunter Henry is Mike's start of the week. You can play him at tight end. Yep. Uh, unfor unfortunately, my end. sister took that so literally, Mike. She was so, I don't know, motivated by your Hunter Henry start of the week that she chose to play him over Hawkinson last night. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. But uh, That's why the rankings are on the website. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, she was disappointed. Hey, hey, yeah. hey, 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 guys. We don't know yet. That's true. The Hunter Henry's not like Hunter Hunter Henry could honestly still surpass Hawkinson this week. No. Yeah. He could. Probably not though. He, no, Hawkinson, probably not. Of Hawkinson course. Hawkinson had two touchdowns. Yeah. But I think, you never know. I'm saying Hunter could have two touchdowns. The New Orleans Saints are one and oh. Monday night football game, double header. Why? <laughs> Why are we doing this? If you're gonna double head something NFL, <laughs> please put them back to back. Please. <laughs> Don't do this thing where they're an hour apart and you got to have both games simultaneously. You heard the man. <laughs> you heard him. Like, yeah. what is structurally? What is the point of this? Like, this is not good for. This is not good for the the whoever is showing the game. It's some sort and of trying like, to sell advertising. I think it's like a it, it's some sort of like ratings test thing that they do. I I, I know I know why it is. Because and we're doing it again next week. Is that what I'm hearing? What? what why? The, I want to watch all the games at this different times the contract situations for the different networks this makes the nfl the most money the reason i know that is because they always do what makes the most money yeah that's so probably a good i'm gonna point. go ahead and trust them they're doing just fine saints panthers saints are one and oh panthers all in one DraftKings sportsbook line new orleans three point road favorites over unders 40 points so you have a brand new offense in carolina new uh quarterback uh the offensive starters they're all brand new. Bryce Young looked like a rookie in week one. Adam Thielen looked like uh, uh, whatever the opposite of a rookie is. And then a retired player. Jonathan Mingo, it was disappointing. It was. But the offense just looked bad. Miles Sanders had a ton of opportunities. I would be borderline targeting him right now in fantasy. 22 opportunities, I believe, was second. Uh, in the NFL or close to it. And he finished at RB22. It wasn't impressive. When I say targeting him, I mean for trade for the season. In this game, yeah, not it, could so be, much. it could be rough. I mean, the, low over under, 18 points. You can play him. Mostert or Miles Sanders? Miles. Yeah, Miles Sanders based on Just the for volume. volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I don't uh, – you know – this is a, I think, a player that you're going to want to target after this week. the The Saints defense is good across the board, um, and it's a divisional game with a low over under, so you're not expecting big things. And really, 
on the, on the Carolina Panthers side of the ball, that's it. it. It's only Miles Sanders. It's a volume play only. And then you look to the Saints side of the ball. I'm playing the Saints defense in league of record. It's mm -hmm. my favorite of the week. Looking at the running back room, Jamal Williams was exactly what we thought he was. He was 18 for 45, didn't get into the end zone, fumbled two targets for seven yards, pedestrian numbers, but tons of volume. Probably the same from him this week. Is that fair to say? I mean, the only probably. thing I will say is that the Panthers were devastated on the ground in week one. Yeah, it and it's probably – it comes down to is Kendra Miller recovered for the game because it, it wouldn't surprise me to – if Jamal is still inefficient for them to see if Kendra Miller can do anything. Uh, it, it also, I mean, both, both sides of the, of the story are very probable to me or, uh, possible to me of Jamal getting it all, not really doing anything or Jamal being supplanted by Kendra Miller, which my is leading me to the point of, I don't really want to play either of these guys. What about, uh, Jamal Williams and potential volume or Najee against Cleveland, which is the second Monday night game. Oh man! Najee had what was it? Eight? No, eight yeah. total eight opportunities. Total opportunities. Six which Jason brought up. Like if you if you are not hitting thirteen opportunities in week one, it's a bad sign for the season historically. Seemingly a bad omen. I I think I'd still go Najee. Olave play him. Yeah, he was, he was good. Michael Thomas, eighty percent of snaps. He's going to be a, I guess, late career Robert Woods style start from now on. Sure. He, lo he looked pretty good. Eight targets. He was five for 61, 80% of snaps. I mean, a player like that, at, at the very least, start him early in the season. Maybe he slows down. but uh, Yeah, Rashid Shahid's performance makes me wonder if, if Thomas could get kind of surpassed, boxed out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and um, uh, J.C. Horn it will not be playing for the Carolina Panthers, which, I mean, that's a brutal hit to the secondary. And the Saints' recipe in week one, Jamal Williams was very inefficient. Derek Carr was not. Completed 70% of his passes, 12.3 uh, A dot. That was only behind two. Like, they were they were ripping the ball down the field. So oh, I, If you have Olave, you're so happy yes, about those numbers. Yes, you are. Is he a potential start this week? Carr? Yeah, he, you absolutely. Yeah, he's a streamer. John Johnson, 75% of snaps versus Hayden Hurst on the other side. Hayden Hurst, the number two tight end in week one. I mean, it's... Hurst is going to be a kind of a buddy he, to Bryce Young just in a be. PPR standpoint because because be. Thielen's unwilling. <laughs> is that all we get? <laughs> it's just like an you, old person you woke scared. Him up, you woke him up from a nap. <laughs> <laughs> where am I, Marvin? Where are you? I'm sorry, Adam. <laughs> Cleveland, 1-0, taking on the 0-1 Pittsburgh Steelers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, there it is. Cleveland, minus 2.5 on the road. Wow. The over-under's 39. And I am, I'm all over Cleveland in this game. I mean, you're going to have no Deontay Johnson on the Pittsburgh side. Can he pick it? He said he's day-to-day, -day, Andy. Well, the, this is just me taking a guess then, Mike. He's day-to-day -day for so, weeks. So they just keep him as doubtful in the platforms. I'm, I can't move him. I'm going I'm gonna go bench dim Steelers. Oh, bench them all? Bench dim all. <laughs> this is a blarf game. I mean it we is. and the implied point total is eighteen points for them. I, I'm benching dim Steelers. If you want to take a shot on Pickens, he will have targets to support the possibility of a large play. Okay. So you're <laughs> who would you you would you start where would you be starting Najee Harris? So Najee Harris, college ver versus he was <laughs> great then. Yeah. He sure was. He was dominant. Um, Najee Harris or Zach Moss? Moss, keep moving down the line. Uh, you know, I don't think you need to. I mean, if you're there, so is that the bottom of the line? That's the bottom. You just uh, said no, no, Najee's got, last player I, alive. I got one for you. AJ Dillon with Aaron Jones likely out. So I mean, we. would we will have further uh, information on that today. Like, if Jones doesn't practice today, it's done. A.J. Dillon against the Falcons or Najee Harris? I'll say Dillon to be stubborn, but that's a game where the line changed too. Did you see that? I did not. Atlanta now favored. Interesting. So I, I think we expected that All to right. potentially happen with the injury reports, but it, it did change. Watson, Chubb. Elijah Moore and Amari Cooper, 
What are we thinking on the Cleveland side? Week one for the Steelers was, look, it was the, it was the 49ers, but they gave up 37 fantasy points to the wideout, 25 to the running back. They, they kind of looked I, like the game got away from them. I am completely willing in general to forgive week one's performance for the Steelers and give the vast majority of credit over to the San Francisco 49ers. Their defense looked just brutally dominant, just like they did last year. And I, I am willing to say, you know what, I'm not going to make this indicative of Najee. I'm not going to make this indicative of uh, Kenny Pickett. That being said, another defense that looked so good week one, shutting down the Bengals, was this Brown. So it's 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 a follow-up difficult defense. So I am still a little bit concerned. Uh, but obviously, the, the the Browns had the benefit of the weather to help them out in that week one matchup as well. Mike, George Pickens or Elijah Moore? Oh, man. Uh, I think I might play Elijah Moore. Eli like Elijah I'm, I'm Pickens in that one. Jason. Elijah Moore is – this is the type of matchup that Elijah Moore will – really succeed in the Steelers. I mean, uh, you With the saw pass rush. Well, no I'm, no, I'm just saying like the that type slot. of a player. They, they get killed by the slot. Generally speaking, you have Brandon Ayuk who is tremendous against man coverage. And Elijah Moore is like, he's that guy in terms of being able to create separation. So it, it would not shock me to see Elijah Moore with like 10 plus targets in this game. Any additional thoughts on this game, Jason? Uh, is the Muth getting loose? Uh, I, I'm I'm always going to be starting the Muth. He he was drafted to be started. Got a touchdown last week. Didn't do much. He also um, got he got kind of banged up there. Yeah, I mean, obviously he needs to be active to be played. And then Amari Cooper. I'm uh, not worried about the the weather game from last week. He's going to be in my lineup as well. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. Well, well, well. Tua helped me to victory last week. Pretty big week. Zay Flowers helped as well. Uh, Mike should be embarrassed that I was the only one with Zay Flowers in the lineup. I had Dobbins, so I could not. I wasn't going to go all Ravens. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, but through one week, at least, I have managed to avoid shame and disappointment. Jason? Yeah. What? You've got a smile on your face. Yeah, because I realize that we've got this stupid segment, <laughs> and I'm going to look so dumb. Yeah, you are. Wheel of Shame. All right. Yeah, this is this is good. This is good stuff, Jason. Give you, it to me. Let's spin that wheel. Spin the wheel All right, of shame. The wheel's spinning. We got cowboy safety first. Banana rama. Banana rama. <laughs> nope. Head stuffing. Head stuffing. Head stuffing. Uh oh. Uh, what could I that imagine possibly you will be stuffing your head into something. I will be stuffing my head into. <laughs> Oh is my that a turkey? goodness gracious, this is a turkey. All right, well, I guess I'm ditching glasses and hats. <laughs> I hope you have your lineup memorized. <sighs> no, he's got eye holes in that thing. But he's got to get his glasses. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. That is, oh, yeah, that's gross. Mm -hmm. All right, now it's getting real. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on us now. <laughs> okay, put your tongue away. Um <laughs> Stop oh, Stop man. doing that. This is a family show. <laughs> Nasty is right. Let's jump into the lineups for this week's Fantasy Face-Off and hopefully repeat this lunacy uh, for those uh, listening oh at gosh. home and not watching. Jason's head is uh, <laughs> right within a... Is it a... Ch that would be a, a turkey. Chicken. No, is it's it a, a, a turkey. A, it's a turkey. This is a turkey. Yeah. What? How do you know? <laughs> Uh, it's a turkey because it, it's like a Thanksgiving Day turkey. Bumpy. It he is the stuffing. <laughs> I am the stuffing. Uh, all right, let's kick oh, this off. He's, real gross. He's, he's real disgusting. All right, my quarterback. My quarterback is Joshua Allen. Josh Allen Ooh. at home against Las Vegas. Okay, I know there were some cheaper choices. I wasn't going to go with them this week. Paid up. Cash game seventy nine hundred. Josh Allen, give it to me. Okay. Well, I paid up even more. I am going Patrick Mahomes at 8,300 against Jacksonville. Highest over-under of the week. I think that that game is back and forth. Uh, and when I saw Patrick Mahomes, I was like, I want him on my team. Okay. 
That's interesting. Well, I paid down a little bit. Goff? I have Jared Goff, yeah. my start of the week at home against the Seattle Seahawks. We saw the shootout last year. I don't think we're getting a shootout, but I think that we are getting Jared Goff and the Lions uh, with a good offensive output. Well, my starting running backs, it's time to get the rookies out there, boys. Bijan and Jameer Gibbs, 7,900 oh, and 6,300. Where? How much? I'm putting them both in there at home. Do you have home. A, like a salary hack? What is happening? Nope, nope. I got 100 left in this lineup. <laughs> Bijan and Jameer Gibbs, my two starters okay. at running back. What was the what's Gibbs at? Sixty three hundred. Okay. Okay. That's wow. not bad actually. All right. Well, I uh, I'm you going with targets uh, at running back. I have also paid up for Saquon Barkley. Uh, I talked about how I think he's going to be good against the <laughs> Cardinals. Yeah. And uh, I've got Damian Pierce, my start of the week at fifty six hundred. I think he's a good value at home now uh, in a favored game. All right, I saved some cash at the running back position as well. You know it. Zach Moss is in this lineup yep, yep. against the Gross. Houston, Houston Texans. 4,700, that is fantastic. I'm also going with Rashad White at home Whoa. against the Chicago Bears. Grosser. Yeah, against the Moss Chicago and Bears. White? Yeah, 5,500. Oh, hold on. So, I mean, I've saved a lot of money I'm, so far. I was going to say, I'm very worried about your wide receivers. <laughs> Uh, my starting three wide receivers, my first one's Stephon Diggs. The stack with Josh Allen, 8,000 for Stephon Diggs. My second guy, Zay Flowers, 5,000 for nice. Zay. And my third at 4,800. It's Nico. Nico I, I knew you would have I Collins. Knew, I would have bet $100 you had Nico Collins. The way that you talked about him during the matchup, I was like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Someone's shut up. trying to speak that into existence. <laughs> shut up, turkey face. Hey, Andy, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> All right, go ahead and give me those three. <laughs> look at this. Look at what you've made me. <laughs> Fine, you, I'll, I'll be the monster. <laughs> <laughs> you created this. <laughs> All right, um, I apologize, Foot Clan, for having to watch this. I'm just playing the part. Oh, man. Okay, right, so got? Um, I've got Zay Social Flowers. Social media is happy. I've got you Zay got Flowers, flowers okay. as well. I think he's a good value at five thousand. I've got his brother Zay Jones, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> brother from another mother. Brother, yeah. brother from another yeah. mother. I got the Zay boys okay. at forty seven hundred. I wanted uh, that player across from Patrick Mahomes, and then I paid up for what I think is maybe one of the best plays of the week in Amon Ross yeah. St. Brown yeah. full PPR. I assume you have him, of course, stacked with Jared Goff. Of course, I have Amon Ra with St. Brown. Then I have Cal. <laughs> Amon Ra with St. Brown. Amon Ra St. Brown. Uh, then I have Calvin Ridley at 7,200 at home against the Kansas City Chiefs. You got Zay Jones. I got the wide receiver one. And then, oh, was, oh Jamar Chase. Yeah, I saw that coming. At home against the Baltimore Ravens, 79 hundo. Well, here's where the savings begins, Mike. Uh, my tight end, I'm going with another rookie. This is the rookie lineup. Oh. Sam Laporta, 3,900 at home in, uh, in Detroit. I went with the bargain of the week, looking for that slot receiver opportunity. I'm going Josh Downs, 3,400. Okay. Mm, Josh okay. Downs for Anthony Richardson against Houston. And then I went with the New York Football Jets, 2,700 against Dallas. Could have gone Cardinals. Or, uh, sorry, could have gone, I think, uh, the no, probably or the Cardinals. Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah, could have gone Cardinals yeah. at 2,800. Okay. Went with the Jets at 2,700. All right. Uh, for... My defense, I've got the same Jets against the Dallas Cowboys. I think they're a good value at 2,700. Uh, should get some sacks and some turnovers at tight end. I also went with a rookie, but a different rookie. I paid down a little bit for a better option in Luke Musgrave uh, for the Packers. Mike, over to you. Uh, so at Wait, what happened to yeah. your flex? I don't have one. <laughs> Is it Zach Moss? Yes, it's <laughs> Zach Moss. <laughs> He's, he's a good value of $4,700. <laughs> oh, man. So You're wearing the right outfit right. for that pick. Yeah. All right, so uh, my turkey. defense, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 3,200, so I'm just kind of going with the all-in approach against there, Chicago. There you go. Uh, at flex, the rookie Jackson Smith and Jigba for okay. the Seattle Seahawks, just 4,500. Hopefully we can correlate some, some scoring against uh, my quarterback, which means I had to save some cash. So here we go, boys. The Denver Broncos tight end one. Oh, he Adam did it. Adam Troutman, wow. 3,000. You want this? 
on brand. At home against Washington. More yards than uh, uh, Zach Ertz last week, by the way. That's nasty. <laughs> All right. That was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. couple reminders as we close things down and wish you luck in week two. Sunday Live, Mike will be with you. BallersLive.com this Sunday as uh, Jason uh, – oh, gosh. He's just <laughs> – we need to end this show yeah, right it. now. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here before the censors <laughs> start removing this from YouTube or wherever. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for supporting the show. See you on Sunday at BallersLive.com. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.